A resurfaced interview with Leslie Headland, the showrunner of The Acolyte, implies that the entire series is her own lesbian fan fiction with just a Star Wars veneer. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you to please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. This is over at thatparkplace.com. Wrote this up this morning. And this was uploaded by X user BeerBurp23. Let's take a listen to what Leslie Headland had to say. This was obviously at Star Wars Celebration last year, where she was talking about the Acolyte series. Let's listen. Um, when I saw Frozen as a, as a grown-ass woman, I, um, I cried through the entire movie. I, there was just something about... The relationship between the sisters, the the like de villainization of uh, the classic kind of fairy tale bad bad guy, you know, um, uh, the concept of true love being between two sisters and not a heterosexual relationship, like it just mm -hmm. it just destroyed me completely, and I thought. Gosh, you know, I would love to make something like this that is, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, Disney, meaning it's something that like my parents would have allowed me to see when I was younger as a queer person. Gotcha. But I would have been able to understand as a queer person. And I think I, I would have had a completely different life. And so I really was inspired by it and was like, God, I would love to make a story like this. Um, and so when I was developing this original idea to pitch to Kathleen, um, I thought, well, you know, it can't just be that. Uh, you know, when you're pitching Star Wars, you have to pull from what, you know, George was also interested in. Like, it can't just be like, well, I'm referencing, especially if you're going to set something, you know, in the, during the High Republic or end of High Republic into prequels, you, you don't have the Skywalker saga. Like, you can't uh -huh. reference a character that was created by George and or Filoni. Like, you have to create your own new characters. So that is what Leslie Headland had to say. Obviously, I think the implication is obvious. She is creating her own lesbian uh, fan fiction here and then putting it in Star Wars under the guise of the Acolyte. Uh, and then obviously she's like, oh, well, you know, uh, I can't really just do a Star Wars story being my lesbian fan fiction. I guess I have to put some kind of Star Wars in it. It's got to have something in there so I can push this agenda that I have. Uh, very obvious uh, what she is doing there. Uh, and this isn't the first time she's done this uh, in an actual pub published uh, interview with Empire. Uh, she This is how she explained how she pitched the idea of the act. Like she says, it is sort of a joke, but it was my elevator pitch to Kathy Kennedy. I want to take that revisionist version of female villains that you see in a fairy tale media and tell it through that lens. She described it as Kill Bill meets Frozen. She then went on to say, when I was a young queer girl, I was just hanging out with Ursula the Sea Witch from The Little Mermaid. As a queer girl growing up, if you don't identify with the heroes and the villains show up and they're all queer coded, you're like, yes, that's me. As a queer filmmaker, you're going to see some camp inevitably, but I would say that tonally our references are darker. So obviously very clear that she's putting this agenda into the show. We also have confirmation from actress Jodie Turner-Smith that the show is going to be pushing feminism. This is what Jodie Turner-Smith said during Star Wars Celebration. She says, my character, you know, she's a powerful leader. She's a powerful leader, leader in a very woman-centered world, which I was very excited to kind of be in that because I feel like Star Wars is very patriarchal. Uh, so it was kind of a, it was kind of cool to have this sort of woman-centered figure. And, you know, she's really sort of going through a struggle because, I mean, that's Star Wars, right? She's really kind of like in this sort of quandary. And that's sort of her journey is to kind of go through this struggle between two ideas. She then told this to Screen Rant. We don't ever really see these more like matriarchal energies. I think we already kind of started to center women in this world with the latest movies. And we're seeing it as well in a lot of the other TV shows too. But I think it's often very much about a man's journey. And this is less about that. She then told Entertainment Weekly that the series is, quote, part of a wave of more inclusive and beautifully represented Star Wars shows. So that felt really cool. And I felt the importance of that, especially in some of the stuff that I got that I got to where everyone really was excited about what they were seeing and what that would maybe mean for different fans, fans that don't necessarily look like what you normally think the traditional Star Wars fans look like. Because if there's anything I learned from the show, it's that the Star Wars fan is very, so she has this idea of what a traditional Star Wars fan looks like. And then she says that that's the Star Wars fan is varied. So who knows what these people are even saying, but I think it's very clear. She's talking about pushing feminism in the show. So not only is it going to be pushing uh, Leslie Headland's lesbian fan fiction that is now getting the official seal of approval from Kathleen Kennedy. 
Lucasfilm and the Walt Disney Company, but it is also going to be pushing feminism. Uh, and I can only surmise that because of all of this, the show is dead on arrival. And it's really not that hard to predict that given the fact that we have seen declining ratings for Star Wars on Disney Plus over the past year. Mandalorian season three had worse viewership than the than season two, according to Nielsen. And that is with Disney Plus having more subscribers than when season two premiered. We're seeing declines uh, with Marvel as well. A lot of decline in the viewership of these shows because the Walt Disney Company has embraced these woke ideologies, which are, at the end of the day, they are anti-truth. But let me know what you guys make of this resurface interview uh, from Leslie Headland and these comments from Jody Turner Smith about the acolyte. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth.